Hey everyone, thank you for listening to another episode of Spoiler Force Podcast. You can find more episodes on any major podcasting platform such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, and even on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe and make sure to follow and like Spoiler Force Podcast on Facebook. It's Fresh Dialin and you're listening to Spoiler Force Podcast. Episode 63 of Spoiler Force Podcast. My name is Ricky and thank you for tuning in. This week's guest is someone all the way from Singapore. Uh, my third international guest, which I'm very happy to have. You, you may have seen her work on Instagram, on Facebook. Uh, she does a lot of commission drawings and have a, has a very unique style of like anime manga type art. So let me introduce my guest here, Rajda Lin. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. Hello everyone, thank you so much Ricky for inviting me to your podcast as well. I'm very happy to be here. You know, I, I wanted to let fans know that um, when I, the first time I saw your art was def- uh, yeah. like just like a few months ago, not not too oh long my ago. God. So like, <laughs> so that, that's why like in, in our emails, um, I was mentioning yes. the, the Demon Slayer art, and you know, uh, yeah. so so like last oh, yeah. year's. Last year's Demon Slayer was so phenomenal, and oh yes, I, it was. I, I'm like, I I read the manga. Have you finished the manga already too? Oh yeah, I did. Okay, so um, I subscribed to the Wiz Media, the Shonen Jump, and then yeah, I did. It, I did too. <laughs> <laughs> I did so, too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I I couldn't wait anymore, and you you know, there's fans and yeah, like the, the comment section that like to spoil it. So oh my god, yes. <laughs> So I ha- That's why I decided to read the manga. It's too many spoilers. Yeah. Oh my god. Me, me and my cousin, uh, we we were so into the anime that when we saw uh, like yeah. a a little spoiler, we were like, all right, screw it, we're gonna just start reading. So we binge read, <laughs> and we just kept going uh, yeah. up until it finished. And uh-huh. what did you think of the overall story? The overall story? Yeah. Yeah. What um, would- I think it's. Uh... Um, I personally like it. I think it's nice. Uh, the character design, I think was really good. Um, I feel that the character design, the personality and everything is quite fresh and compared with other shonen manga. I don't want to say too much uh, because spoilers, but uh, I think it's nice, yeah. <laughs> We'll, we'll keep we'll keep it brief without spoiling. But what did you think of the ending? Right. Yeah, because a lot of some fans ending. were disappointed with the ending. But some loved it. I, I, I was the one that really liked how uh, Gotoge ended the Demon Slayer ending. What, what was your thoughts on yes. that? Um, I was hoping that it would go on a bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I thought it was like, you know, it's a nice series. I I, I personally think it, if, if the writer wants to, uh, she can definitely extend it. But I feel that this ending is um good. I think it's good. I can see that it keep, can keep going on, but I think ending it in this way is also um, also nice in its own way, and I respect the writer for it. I think it's not a bad ending. <laughs> Did you feel that it was rushed at all? Uh, I feel that the story for Tanjiro and Mexico is quite and quite well. I, it, I guess you feel that it's rushed, it's most likely because uh, I feel that some other character, uh, I feel that you can explore them a bit more. That's how I feel like, uh, you know, like side character like Inosuke or, you know, like uh, EU. Like, there's a lot of room to play. I feel that it's a good closure for the main character. Yeah, I, like the ending, Um, I felt like there was some loose ends too, but it wasn't... Yeah, yeah. Too too terrible because Kotoki kept the story really centered around you know the main, the main four Tanjiro, Nezuko, Inosuke, and Zenetsu, which I liked a lot because yeah. uh, usually yeah. a lot of like shonen manga there's too many characters so there's too many stories so I I thought that Kotoki did really good with just keeping it centered around those four um, yeah. you know there was so many characters that um, fans loved you know like. I won't say yeah. who exactly, but um, one of my favorites was uh, Ren Goku. And for manga readers oh, and listeners, yeah. you know what happens to him. I'm not going to say what it, what it is. 
But you know, because of him, he's such a fan favorite, and especially with the movie coming oh, yeah, out. He is. Oh uh, my god, the movie looks so good. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I can't, I can't wait to watch yeah. it. Um, but yeah, sadly, sadly with with you know with COVID, it, it's been such a drag because I think because yeah. I, I think what earlier this spring it was supposed to come out and then they pushed it and now it's already almost August and there's still no yeah, like updates so. for it. Well, it's too bad, but well, what can we do about it? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm super excited uh, because. Yufoto does such a great job in animating. I can't wait to see how they're going to do the movie because movie budgets are much bigger. The um, movie is going to be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just went to watch a bit have uh, Heaven's View and the movie uh, the animation was like so amazing. So I can like, I was, that's why I really look forward to uh, the Infinity Train art. To let fans know as well, uh, Rajda, can, can you kind of uh, let fans know how you got into art? Alright, how do I get into art? Um, it starts off pretty early <laughs> in my life and it's actually starting with anime. <laughs> I should say when I was young, like around uh, 4 or 5 years old or something along that line, I kind of forgot when exactly. I was really young. Uh, I was watching this anime. Um, last time it's a magical girl anime um, and it don't know why for some reason I was really drawn to it. Like I thought to myself that this looks amazing. I really want to be able to draw just like that. And I remember kind of bringing my uh, um, notebook, <laughs> like school notebook up and trying to sketch the, the kind of weapon that the girl, the main character used in the anime. It was a very kitty drawing and stuff like that. I think from that point onward, I kind of have a, that aspiration to be able to draw well, to be an artist. So that's, that's how I start off. So you got into art as a young child. Now, I, I've yeah. read I've read somewhere, I think it was your Facebook story or somewhere um, where you talked about like how you left your job to be an artist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what, what, were you, what were you doing before? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm actually... Uh, I was doing something art related as well. Um, before that, uh, when I graduated from a uh, university, and I was studying graphic design back then. So I was like, uh, at that point in time, I thought to myself that maybe uh, drawing and making my uh, manga and stuff like that is not a very smart thing to do. <laughs> at that point in time, I thought I couldn't make it as an artist. So uh, I was a graphic designer and at the point when I quit my job, I was the art director of this of a company. Then I thought to myself, and you know what, I still want to be an artist. So if I don't do it now, then <laughs> so yeah, that's how I quit my job. And so you're currently independent right now, right? Uh, yeah, you can say that. I, I know that you also do like commissions for uh, for your clients. Um, I, I saw one that I really liked a uh, few weeks ago. Oh, like, really? I think a week or two ago. It was the All Might one that you did on Facebook. I thought that one was really oh, good. Thank you. Yeah, the, the Young All Might. Uh, I really liked that one. Um, yeah, like like I've said before, like I, I was really just drawn drawn into how you do your art style because uh, you know a lot of fans are, or not fans, but a lot of artists these days are using like a lot of uh you know, c not cgi but like 3d art or uh, digital uh, art and uh, you, you, uh, yeah. you still kind of keep it on like with you know pencil and paper <laughs> so the, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so to see to see that style of art still like to see artists still do that i, I respect that a lot I, I know like most artists still do it but it's just more convenient with digital art and uh, uh are, are you currently using digital art as well? And since you've mentioned that you were a graphic designer, are you still using digital art for your content as well? Um, I kind of a mixture of both. Honestly, because uh, I starting out drawing uh, traditionally, like when I was down, I draw on pen and paper, and it's always been like that. So um, even though I use computer to do my graphic design, when I just at the point when I just quit my job to. Uh, draw full time, um, I was much more comfortable with drawing traditionally than digital art. Digital art was something that I wasn't confident with at all. So eventually I kind of like learned how to do it. So now I can do, kind of can do both. Um, although I, you know, uh, traditional art is where I come from. So I have 
certain affinity towards it. And, and I seen some of your clips. Um, you wear like the uh, like the wrist. Oh, what is it? Yeah. the ca- or the, the wrist cast. Uh, do you have like carpal tunnel or something to eat too, or is it just like an extended period of time from uh, just drawing from hours? Is that why you wear that? Uh, I have a history of carpal tunnel. Um, because uh, I drew too much. <laughs> <laughs> There is this one time that I think I, uh, I think I was invited to a Overwatch launch event to kind of draw a portrait of people there as a hero or a shiro, and it's kind of like I really wanted to uh, draw as many people as possible. So I kind of like going very a little bit overboard and screw up my wrist. <laughs> So I couldn't draw for, uh, I think I heard my wrist, I couldn't draw one week, I need to, uh, to take a rest. So uh, from that point on, I kind of like, mm, maybe I should have been wearing the wrist guard to kind of more like a preventive measure because when I draw, I move too much on my wrist and it's kind of like not very good. So I wear the wrist guard to prevent my wrist from moving too much. If you like podcasts like me and want to start your own, use Buzzsprout. Buzzsprout is a very effective and easy way to begin your podcasting journey. With easy-to-use tools, Buzzsprout can help you get your podcast to major podcasting platforms like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and more. You can view stats, create audio clips, and even have your own podcasting website. Buzzsprout has helped hundreds of thousands of people to begin their own podcast like myself, and you can find ideas, tips, tricks, video tutorials to better your own podcast. Follow the link in the description to start your own podcast today. And once you sign up, you'll get a $20 Amazon gift card. This lets Buzzsprout know that I sent you, and this also helps support Spoiler Force Podcast. Happy podcasting. Do you struggle with eating junk food and late night snacking? Well, I've been using FNX Sports Rebalance Super Greens, and I've been able to control my eating habits, get my daily vitamins, fiber, and loose fat around my stomach area. The Rebalance Super Greens comes in multiple flavors and is easy to use by just mixing the supplement in water. You can drink this anytime during the day and feel energized without any groggy after effects. Use the code SPOILERFORCE, all one word, S-P-O-I-L-E-R-F-O-R-C-E, and get 15% off your very first order. Okay, so uh, for listeners who are uh, lis- listening, we were having some technical issues, so we switched all over right. to a uh, different... Um, audio source we're using Streamyard. um sure. so uh raj do we end it off with you talking about like how you have carpal tunnel because you over oh, you yeah. drew too much um, which is <laughs> yeah. which is not bad but like you know uh being being injured while you're working right. it does uh take a toll because you yeah. have to draw for your since it's your living um yeah so how, how have you been taking care of that so far um i just kind of like a uh... How should I say? When I don't draw, sometimes I do some kind of hand exercise. And uh, whenever I draw, um, I always wear a wrist guard to prevent my wrist from moving too much. So I kind of force myself to use like the whole arm to draw instead of just using the wrist. And I do exercise regularly um, nowadays um, because I find that it helps a lot with my carpal tunnel. So yeah, take good care of your health. It's a good thing. <laughs> because I, I've seen like some of the, you do like time lapses when you draw your artwork too. Uh, yeah. Um, one of the ones that I was really impressed by was one that you oh. had on your YouTube channel, the 150 mm. Pokemon drawing, which oh my God. <laughs> crazy. Oh my God. Like, I think what you said, it was like 30 hours total. I, I, I'm pretty sure you didn't oh, yeah. draw that straight, but still no, like to, <laughs> to invest like that much time while you're drawing mm. and like just to do all that not just with your pencil mm. but to ink over with pen and to color all of it too man that's super impressive <laughs> thank you so much yeah that piece was very fun and yeah it took quite a long while for me to finish but uh it was good yes I had a lot of fun drawing that one thanks for liking it <laughs> how, how did that process like how did you think of that to to know where to I guess mm. to fit all of them onto that one paper or page of paper or that sheet? Um, did mm. you already have something in mind already, or do you kind of just freehand it? I kind of have a very rough idea. Like uh, I know that I want to draw like a Pokemon, a Pokeball in the middle, and kind of surround it with Pokemon. But 
how it is um, organized. It is kind of uh, I just go with the I went with the flow. So I just um, open like a po the Pokemon index and see like you know just draw one by one, just kind of like uh, until it it all fits in the <laughs> in the paper, and it was like. You know, uh, it was very spontaneous, yeah, that piece. Very spontaneous. And speaking of, like, childhood animes, I know you're yeah. also a big fan of Sailor Moon, too. Oh, my and God. And I, yeah, I, I saw your manga collection. <laughs> and, oh, my God. Your <laughs> your collection is like a bookstore. <laughs> like, yeah, it was so crazy about it. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, I, I buy comic books here in the West, and uh. um, I have, you know, I thought I had a lot of books. And like a lot of my uh, friends were like, Ricky, you should open a store too. And then I saw your collection of manga. I was like, oh my God. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not too bad on my end. Um, <laughs> yeah, I read a lot of manga. I was like the that that crazy person in the classroom that read manga all day. <laughs> have you kept count of how many volumes you have? Because it looks like you have. I don't quite know. A bit. I wanted to count. Um, I don't know honestly, and. <laughs> uh, the manga collection I had in my house is kind of like uh, we I share it my with my younger brother. Um, I was older than him, so I kind of start buying first because you know like um, as an older sibling, I think I got a bit more pocket money than him. <laughs> <laughs> so, but eventually, uh, he like he started contributing. So it's like uh, how should I say? Uh, there's some manga that the. Uh, um, we we both share and some of the manga that he only him like buy uh, usually the newer ones. So I have no idea. Um, the combination of all of it should be quite quite a lot. <laughs> Do you have it uh, stored in a separate room? Since you have yeah, so much? there's the one upstairs, one shelf in my brother's room. Another shelf in the corridor. <laughs> she has two shelves in the corridor. Oh my god, have no <laughs> yeah. It was it was uh, pretty crazy buying manga. Yeah, I, I just started <laughs> buying like uh, or inv started investing into manga um, because most of the most of most of the time I read digitally. Um, oh, so yeah. I started I started buying more physical copies. I think um, one set right. that I'm currently buying right now is. The yeah. My Hero Academia Vigilantes. Oh, yeah. Oh, I so, haven't really read that one yet. Yeah, it, that one, that one's. Uh, I'm kind of behind on it still. Like, there's. I think there's mm. another volume coming out next month. I believe. Oh, or, I see. But I uh, find the time to read it. It's definitely a, a interesting read because now you're reading mm -hmm. into a, a. It's it's set before like how heroes have the regulations in the story. Ah. So it was, oh, yeah. It's kind she of, was it's kind of like a prequel. Um, oh, that's so, cool. so the the main character he's he's a college student instead of like a young kid like Midoriya. So I thought that was a really oh, good perspective. Hey. Yeah, actually, that sounds very interesting. Yeah, oh, it, 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 sounds, it sounds fun. You, you can see like the parallels of that and the mm. main storyline because like, he's also a All Might fan, and uh, <laughs> he, I could tell a little bit because of the way he. <laughs> his costume is this yeah <laughs> and there's like I, I thought it was great how they they did some parallels with that in the original yeah. storyline because like he's like like i said he's a all might fan and then he wants to be a hero but at this point of the story like there's so many vigilantes going against the law so he ah, ends up see. becoming one um and hopefully from from what i'm reading i, I don't want to spoil too much but i i hope right. that they have some, some one day have him cross over with the original storyline. I think that'd be really good too. Oh yeah, that would be great actually. Oh my god, actually now that you tell me about this, it sounds sounds very fun. Maybe yeah, uh, take a look into it. Yeah, Horikoshi has great ways of like writing the side characters, making them seem very <laughs> important. So like if you like oh, yeah. characters like you know uh, Aizawa's really into the ah, in storyline. Yeah. Uh, Fat Gum is featured in there. Oh really? Um, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, because I know like in the in the main story, like Fat Gum kind of just had that one arc, and then he kind of just went away. But uh, mm, yeah. with Vigilante, he's more involved in there, and um, it was really cool. Like they have little cameos or like 
Easter, Easter eggs. And uh, there's this like one panel where like uh-huh. they don't ever uh, meet yet, but they they do show like how the main character in Vigilance is like when he's you know doing his hero stunt. Um, they do oh. show like a little like silhouette of Midoriya looking back and seeing what's happening. So I thought that was really cool. They kind of teased I that. See. And so I, I really like how they're teasing that interaction. But are are you reading the My Hero Academia manga too? Or are you just watching the anime? I thought, okay, I was watching mainly the anime. And I think at the end of like season two, I was like, oh God, I want to know what happened. <laughs> then I went to watch red manga for a bit. Then after that, the season three came out. So I stopped reading the manga and went to watch the anime again. So um, I'm kind of like, uh, currently I'm actually in the middle of watching season four. Actually, I just recently watched uh, season four before I got onto the podcast. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I actually just watched like Fat Gum doing the, his thing <laughs> in the anime and you just talk about him. So I said, hey, cool. <laughs> did, did you like when Fat Gum got skinny? <laughs> No, I haven't watched that far yet. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. No, Spoiler. No, no. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I feel bad now. No, 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 it's a very minor thing. Anyway, now that you tell me about it, I want to see how he looks. <laughs> oh, yeah, you'll you'll love that scene. I thought. Oh man, I'm so sorry. I I, I jumped the guns too soon. I, no, no, it's fine. It's it's fine. You, you will like how he gets to that point. I'll tell you that. Um, oh really? This, Oh yeah, this arc that you're on right now in season four, I, I've been telling all my friends this too. Like, it's by far my favorite arc of the entire story so far. I, I'm up to date on the manga right now. Um, oh. Where they're at in the manga, it's pretty crazy, but I, I haven't seen anything that made me like get mm. wowed like how this arc has. When I was reading the manga for this for this uh, for this arc, the Yakuza arc for my hero, I was just blown away. You know, seeing wow, I see. Yeah, seeing the big three. You know, fat gum and oh my god, yeah, the big trees. I mean, the so like, yeah. So like, you'll definitely enjoy this arc, um, but I'll I'll just leave it at that since we, since you're not <laughs> finished with it. <laughs> I, look forward, I look forward to it then. <laughs> the finishing the season with anime mm. still being the the topic that we're discussing here. Oh, now, yeah. are there any other uh, animes or manga that you're currently reading too? Oh wow. <laughs> are are you still like? Is there like? Anything that's on your list that you know that you're reading for sure? Okay, currently um the one that I'm reading for sure uh, because I subscribe to a Shonen Jump app, so I'm kind of like uh reading uh, um the manga in there every week. Um, currently I'm reading like Spy X Family, Chainsaw Man, uh, Act H, One Punch Man, Mori King. I don't know, basically a lot of stuff that is in the app. <laughs> Chainsaw Man, um, that one was yeah. really interesting to me too. I, I've only read like the first couple of chapters, but I'm trying to oh, get back it. into it. But I know they <laughs> announced that there's going to be an anime for it, so I'm really excited for that. Oh my god, really? I would love, I would love it. Yeah, I think uh, it was like, I think Crunchyroll, they they wrote an article uh, about it. Um, I, th- I think there was a teaser, uh, I yeah. don't recall, but definitely... Yeah. Um, from just reading the first like two yeah. or three chapters, I was hooked. I I thought they moved really quickly with the story. Yeah. It was so weird and random, but it was so great. I, I love Chainsaw Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because like the the story itself, like it's not doesn't seem like the typical shonen um, no, because of what happens to the main shonen. character, like, <laughs> how he gets his powers. It's, it's not like where he had to like earn his way yeah. through to get it he just the way how he got it was really the shock factor I, and a, a lot of stories nowadays they need shock factor to draw fans you know so i thought that was yeah. a very unique way to introduce his his abilities to the story yeah i was surprised that chonin jam would have this kind of series on the magazine because it's just so uh, i don't know it's like it's definitely not safe for work <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's very borderline like adult <laughs> so i was like whoa shonen jump really but i mean it was a great story so i'm like eh, okay I, I like it yes <laughs> now have you been going to uh i know before covid happened uh, were you going to any conventions at all I, I know that you were at one in singapore uh you had like a, a table right like an artist table 
Oh yeah, um, I go. Uh, I went uh, to a convention uh, often actually. I am is the how should I say? Uh, it's part of the thing that I love to do as an artist uh, to go there and hang out with people who love the same thing as me and drawing a lot. <laughs> So yeah, I joined a lot of convention in uh, Singapore and also overseas, like in USA and uh, Japan and other countries around, uh, you know, the Asia region as well. Hmm. Now with with COVID happening, how does it feel? I, I know that you must be used to traveling to these conventions because usually uh, conventions are, if yeah. you count like the conventions overseas and in the States and everything, it's almost like a year long kind of job. And uh, with... With everything being shut down for you know for this time, how how has that affected you? Um, first of all, it was uh, it affects my yearly plan, of course, uh, because usually I spend a lot of time preparing for a convention and like preparing a uh, prints, products, and you know like um, booking my travel plan and everything. So um, I already kind of pre-booked everything for a convention that I'm supposed was supposed to go this year so I had to um, cancel all of them and it was kind of like you know a lot of uh, um, stuff I have to do to basically take care of all those things but the I'm surprised that I kind of like accepted as well as I was <laughs> just kind of oh um, I guess I cannot do it anymore then <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good mindset, you know, because there's, there's artists that I know that mm. were, they were, you know, it, it's normal to be afraid of what's happening because you don't know what's, how, how to handle this, you know, this nationwide uh, yeah. issue here. And, and you know, I, I really respect that you, you kind of just took it as it is and <laughs> kind of, you know, accepted <laughs> accepted that it's already happening, so there's nothing you can do. Like, there was one yeah. artist, uh, artist friend that I had, and he was... Uh -huh very concerned about how he was going to make his income and because um, like so, some artists really rely on their commissions at the conventions versus like yeah. doing it online or mm -hmm. or like shipping out content so like he was really uh nervous about it but are you currently doing that too to kind of just make up the income like sending out commissions on uh, like through mail and stuff like that too uh, i see i uh, just kind of like uh i kind of took it as it go like um i was like i kind of was i don't know why i was very accepting about this whole thing i'm like oh, okay i guess the situation changed and i'm gonna do something about it and use my time that i got just uh, my free time that i suddenly got from all this to do uh, other project and stuff and yeah um i'm very grateful and thankful that they have some of the people who are very supportive of me and is uh they're willing to like uh, commission some of the artwork uh, from me during this uh, difficult time. And yeah, that's uh, what I've been doing right now. So, yeah, I've been doing commissions and uh, have actually before I gone to this podcast, I was kind of like uh, watching Hero Academia while working on a commission. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Staying busy. laughs> yeah. That's really no, that's awesome because I know yeah. like. Because I keep forgetting that uh, that the time difference over uh, over in Singapore is pretty much oh, twelve hours. So I forgot yeah. to mention that to fans because like I'm actually the uh, today what we're when we're actually recording right now, uh, yeah. uh, it's in the morning for me and over there for you it's in the evening. So uh, I forgot to address that to the fans like you know oh yeah being all the way in Singapore <laughs> it's, it's a twelve hour difference like we're completely yeah. night and day. Um, yep, night and day. Now, you mentioned going to the conventions in the U.S. Uh, mm. Have you gone mostly to just like anime conventions or both comic cons too? Um, I have been mostly getting into anime convention in USA, but um, I think two years ago I joined uh, the New York Comic Con. Yes, New York Comic Con. That was great. I love that convention. It was uh, really nice. I like it. Yeah. I have but not the, been there yet. Uh, but I know uh, that convention's a big one, so. Oh yeah, it was. It was really good. Uh, I walk around a bit. I couldn't walk around that much because um, I was doing commission at my table. But I got a sh small chance to walk around. I, I really enjoy myself. 
with all the contents and everything I saw there. It was great. Would you like to go do, to do more comic conventions uh, as well with sure. the anime conventions in the U.S.? I love both uh, comic and anime. Although I kind of like growing up with anime, so I have, how should I say, like more um, knowledgeable in that area, maybe. So, but I joined, I think I joined more Comic Con in the Asia, Asia side. Um, but for the USA, uh, I think the only one that I joined that is a Comic Con is New York Comic Con, yeah. Because yeah, I I know I know also like in, in your the artwork that you do you you do like uh, Harley Quinn, a uh, lot of the DC and Marvel characters, and I think there was one you did recently with Punchline. That was one of the new characters for DC. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I, I thought that was really cool that you know you you still kept the anime style of things <laughs> and not and not make them look like the com comic book style characters. Because I know like uh -huh. a lot of like artists they kind of just respect both mm. styles you know some some kind of just keep anime characters anime characters and some comic oh, yeah. book characters like, like how they kind of look but you still kept your original touch to it so i thought that was really cool and i, I respect that a lot too because uh, there's there's artists in asia too that i really like um like art germ he's one that i, oh, I see. really like oh, yeah. like i think he's from singapore too right Ah, uh, he lives here yes he does yeah i, I buy a lot of his covers whenever there's like any uh, availability in in the U.S. like for his DC yeah. comics and stuff like that. I yeah. really like how he kept that anime touch with it too. Oh uh, yeah, his art is great. Yeah. <laughs> and ha have you tried uh, tried doing that too? Like trying to do um, I guess projects with comic books uh, companies as well, like DC or Marvel at all. Um, DC and Marvel, I. Like like, have you yeah. tried to reach out to them too to, to do like their covers to see if, um, you know, you could try to do like a variant for them? Okay, I would say I'm interested, although I think I haven't really actively pursuing it. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> but it would be great, yeah. Because yeah, because I I know they're they're pushing out like a lot of um, you know, like I said, they they, they you know they're pushing out with Art German, and there's also like uh, yeah. uh, Derek Chu and and Hugh Lee. They're doing a oh, lot yeah, of yeah, yeah. They're all great artists. Yeah, yeah. Like, a lot of the Asian artists specifically. Like for me, like that's why I like looking, you know, to support Asian artists too. Oh, so thank like, you so much. <laughs> when, when there's when there's like opportunities to buy their content, I just do it because yeah. we gotta help with the rep representation in the states too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so sweet of you. Thank you. Um, I, I bet they will be happy to hear that. And mm. uh, have you done any? Um, have you tried doing any virtual conventions too? I know that's a big thing right now. Um, virtual convention. I think I did. I did the Singapore one. We we just had it. Like uh, I think. Um, not too long ago, I also went on to an interview, um, online interview. I think I post my link on my Facebook page. Yeah, we got one here um, in Singapore. Although it was, um, I think that's the only official one that I joined. Yes. How was that experience? It was pretty, um, it was nice. It's kind of like similar to a live stream basically uh you know i got onto the actually i got onto stream yard just like this one <laughs> oh perfect okay <laughs> it just kind of like a hangout and i was drawing uh some the the uh, harley quinn and punchline piece that you mentioned I, I drew that on the on that particular stream and they were kind of interviewing me while i was drawing and stuff like that. And actually, I think Ajum and Derek Chu was on it as well. Like the, they were on the previous stream that uh, before I entered to uh, you know after them. Yeah, it was pretty pretty fun. Uh, I like the initiative because uh, after all the the conventions in Singapore canceled, I think the community kind of like want something to participate in at least. So I appreciate them that they uh, you know the organizer took the initiative to do it for. <laughs> Yeah, I, I recently um, attended the virtual convention for Anime Expo, and uh, I, I guess yeah. I, like it was different for me because I'm uh, you know, yeah. being so used to going to conventions with so many people. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I guess I understand that it's a 
I guess it's not exactly the same experience. But you know, they did a good job keeping it up, sure, trying yeah. to replicate that experience too. Because I, because uh, panels, the panels were great, and you know, to, to, uh, yeah, and just to see how many people that were involved with you know with the whole Twitch streaming or YouTube streaming, like to see fans mm, just yeah. jump on each panel like that, it kind of. Uh, gave that same experience like as if you were at the event. So I thought that was really cool to kind of just experience yeah, that again. And I, I felt like I was almost at, like, at a convention again because I was actually at home oh, that's, that's all day true. just watching these <laughs> panels. <laughs> <laughs> well, that show sounds like fun. I think I actually missed that one. Have you been to Anime Expo in uh, LA? Oh, yeah. I have been going there for the past three, four years, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. It, it's it's always great fun for me because I have some friends that, you know, like they come over to the convention that they, you know, they live in the, the States or they live in other country and they'll come to Anime Expo and yeah, it's always been fun to go there. Yeah, I've, only, I've only been there um, once. Uh, I think it was see. like 2015. That was my first experience ever. I, I, had ah. some, I had some friends who were really nice to help um, buy, like book the hotel and buy tickets for me. All I had to do was just buy my plane ticket. Oh, so, that's, you got a nice friend. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> it was like a one-time thing. He was like, I'm buying everything right now. Just buy your plane ticket. <laughs> so I, I took advantage of it. I went and, you know, had I had more, not Comic-Con, but more uh, just convention experience in general, I really wish I took advantage of like the panels there when I went there. Um, ah, yeah. and that's, that's something I'm currently good. doing now, now that I've had more experience going to conventions. Like I really enjoy uh, panels and, uh, oh, yeah. art. I can't stay away from artist alley. I'm, like, <laughs> I, I've, like, yeah. I, I love just walking up and down the aisle, seeing everyone's work. So I'm pretty sure if I, if I ever got to see your artwork in person, I know uh, for a fact, I'd like ask for several commissions <laughs> for sure. Cause oh, that's so sweet. Because I, I, I can't stay away from Artist Alley. I can't. Even at Comic-Con, like, I, the, uh, there was one time I went there, and I was like, all right, I'm just going to buy, like, one or two prints. And I ended uh, up going home with so much stuff. I'm like, I don't even know where, uh, where I'm going to put my artwork. I understand, yo. Because, <laughs> like, I have, I have so much artwork at home, and they're, okay. so, some of the stuff's not even up. They're still in the bags, and they're still, like, just sitting there. I, I don't even know what to do with it because I have so much of it. <laughs> okay, that sounds good. Uh... Quite familiar, also. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, that was so experience. <laughs> you know, with the, all the conventions that you've gone to, which ones would you say is your? Have you had the best experience at? I know you mentioned New York wow. Comic Con. Was there any other? Uh, I guess what's what's the anime mm. conventions that you've gone to that you really enjoyed? Wow, well, that's kind of tough. Generally, I kind of enjoy them. Um. Uh, they're all kind of uh, all enjoyable in a kind of a different way. Um, I guess Anime Expo is really big and it kind of like you get all this uh, energy when you go there, like because there's a lot of people and everyone is having fun. It was nice. Um, the downside of it is like it's very crowded. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, well uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, you're an artist, so you get like the artist table. You don't have to wait in lines or anything. I, I think there was uh, one year where Expo had like a lot of people were complaining God. about it, like, but the lines <laughs> at Expo. One of my friends went to, I think it was like 2016 or 17. He said that the lines were like a mile out of the yes. of this oh, convention center. God. So I, I that's a lo super long wait, and I don't I don't know I I yep. understand like that's such a huge convention, but you know damn that's a that's a long yeah, line you know one really mile cool. out just to to go to the convention and uh, <laughs> not to complain about them but i just thought that was just you know it's crazy that you know it's, yeah, you that's know that that's how many people are going yeah. to that kind of convention it's really a lot of people going there no not just visitors so i think artists some um i think last year got a bit of a long line as well <laughs> Oh wow! Okay, so everyone <laughs> suffered the same. <laughs> I think because they um increased the security ma measure last year, so it took longer than usual. I'm not so sure, but yeah, it was the uh, I got into the hall a bit later because of that. But all in all, it was fine. But yeah, really, it was <laughs> it's a really popular convention. Yes. <laughs> Do you enjoy cosplay at all? Um. 
I enjoy looking at them, and sometimes if I have time, uh, I I wear cosplay. But nowadays, you know, it's a bit hard because I have to draw and everything. So I go to convention to usually uh, have a table there. So I don't usually wear a costume when I do that. <laughs> Do you hire any cosplayers to stand at your table too? I know some artists do that. Um, it depends. Uh, usually in the states, not really, but some. But in the, let's say in Singapore, because I have a bunch of friends here who I know personally, and they're cosplayers. So I'm like, hey, you know, why not? <laughs> yeah, because like yeah. that's a, that's yeah. a good way to market your your table too. Because like. Uh, like I've said, there's artists and there's some artists I know here in the states too that that did that they have like just cosplayers stand there and hand out cards or uh, work with them to kind of just draw a crowd more into their to their table. Um, there was one art a cosplayer I saw with that you that you drew a commission for. I forgot what her name was, but I think she's like a, I think she's a Korean cosplayer. I'm, I'm, yes, I, yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. I, I, <laughs> Like I follow her content, even though I can't read what she's writing on on uh, Instagram. But her art, her cosplays are amazing too. So I, I thought that was really, great. I thought she's that was really amazing. cool that you had her at your table, or you did the commission for her, and she was in that same character too. Yeah, she's she's amazing because uh, I'm. I think I met her very early on in my uh, when I just start drawing, and she was so nice and kind, and she's very professional and very hardworking and. She made all the costume, I think, like all by herself. So I was, uh, I really respect her for that. And um, whenever I see her convention, uh, she's always like, um, how should I put this? She's always uh, putting her best. So uh, she's someone that I really respect. Yeah. I don't think it's easy to standing. Uh, posting all days in the convention and looking happy all the time and you're like maybe she's very tired physically but she can still you know like put out so much energy i i really think that was very admirable yeah yeah a lot of uh cosplayers they you know they're always being asked to take photos with and you know sometimes there's even like rude fans too that they like, just come <laughs> up and you know try to be weird with cosplayers which i feel really bad for um but like I think anyone really at like that's a guest or cosplayer or you know even like a celebrity oh. guest that go to conventions they they do go through a lot um being there like a lot of fans don't really see that too because we kind of just think that they just show up at the table and you know they sit down all day but it, mentally it's very exhausting you got to make sure that everyone gets their autograph or everyone gets their commission and and everything has to be on time so like it's it is pretty yeah. exhausting yeah I think it's very kind of taxing. Physically, I don't, I don't think I can actually do that. Like you know, like she's standing all day and like coming up with all kind of posts on the spot, and it was like, wow, that's pretty something. Cause I'm not, <laughs> I'm not <laughs> very extroverted. I don't think I can come up with that kind. Okay, I don't think I can do what she did. She does. So I respect that a lot. <laughs> now, for you, when when you're at your your artist alley table, do you usually feel like? You know, exhausted after two, and just doing so many commissions and trying to, I guess, be creative all day too. Well, at the end of the day, I usually feel uh, physically tired, but uh, because I like drawing and it was kind of fun for me, so uh, usually mentally I think it was fine. Just physically, I think it was. Uh, um, always end up tired at the end of the day. So yeah, but yeah, because it was you have to like. You have to be there early too, right? And then stay yeah. after <laughs> after everyone leaves, and that's when you have to like that's when you can go home and stuff. Um, so, do you have any future projects at all, or I guess the, either the rest of this year or twenty twenty one lined up? I see. Um, I'm actually have been working on this manga uh, for quite a while. Um, to be honest, uh, I start drawing. Uh, because my goal is to become a manga artist. <laughs> That's like my uh, childhood dream, I guess. Um, it's always been my dream. Like, uh, let's say bef um, during the time uh, when it's since I was young until I enter university, if you ask me what 
I want to become when I grew up or what's my job, a dream job, I would say I want to become a manga artist. Uh, but then I, <laughs> I kind of like the thought uh, at in after I started university, I kind of come came I came to a conclusion that it was a silly idea that uh, it's not going to be possible for me. So I kind of like threw it away. Um, but I kind of want to revisit that again. Um, I have been working on my manga like on and off for the past few years, uh, but this year, um, well, uh, in crisis, there's opportunity, I guess. So since all my all the convention are kind of canceled, so I suddenly have a lot of time to work on my personal project. So I have, that's what I've been working on. So I hope that I can show you guys something like you know soon. <laughs> Yeah, that, that seems really exciting because I know, you know, mm. with quarantine, um, a lot of yeah. artists, friends that I have, they, they want to start doing that too, like either doing their own manga or comic book. Oh, that um, sounds great, yeah. So I, I think with, with quarantine, that's been giving everyone like that kind of opportunity to just pursue side projects that they've been wanting to do. But yeah. I, I am looking forward to something that you're doing. I, like I said, I really like the, your yeah. art style. So to, to know that you're working <laughs> on a manga, that's that's pretty exciting. Um it, you don't have to, but if you can, can you kind of just say what it may be about? Are you doing like a shonen anime or manga or uh, is it like horror or what kind of theme is it? It's uh, supposed to be kind of like um, dark fantasy sci-fi, kind of. Um, I originally, I kind of want to aim at like a seinen category. Um, if, if you guys not sure what seinen is, it's like uh, one step above shonen in terms of age range. Uh, shonen is for young boys, seinen is like for grown up boys, so maybe they deal with a bit more difficult topic. Actually, technically, Chainsaw Man that we just talked about should be in the seinen category, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but they kind of like you know um, working working on the manga the I. It's about oh my god, I don't know how to how to summarize it <laughs> without without revealing too much about it. Okay, um, well you don't I mean you don't have to. I mean I don't yeah. wanna have any like any leaks or something like that. <laughs> so um yeah, but, mm, but that is I, that is uh, very exciting to know that you are again working on a manga like that and uh, yeah. especially with that kind of uh with, with the content that you're you're aiming for uh you know because like we were talking earlier shonen is such a huge uh genre yeah. right now especially with the, in the states too a lot of folks are um a lot yeah. of new manga readers are, are always starting with shonen and that, okay. um, that's how i started too so <laughs> it, it's, it's good to know yeah. that you know that there's other uh genres out there for manga which, which is why i i like manga so much because there's always mm -hmm. a manga out there for someone there's not it's not like yeah. categorized it's not just generalized it's there's tons yeah. of different themes for different readers if you're into yeah. all sorts like, of mm. topics so everything for everyone yeah yeah mm. i think that's why like i was gearing towards more manga in, re in recently in the past like a year and a half because yeah. with, with with comic books uh i i, I love it like you know I, I love batman and and superman but uh, yeah. um the the story arcs are written much differently than how manga does it. Cause I, I like how manga is just usually like one artist or one writer uh, uh, continuously yes. versus work versus with comic books. It's either, I mean, they do do that as uh, well, but if it's like uh, an yeah. ongoing yeah. series, <laughs> sometimes they change artists or change yeah. writers and it kind of just throws some, some people off. Um, uh, so I, that's why I like manga a bit more now, uh, but definitely I want to get more into that for sure next year. Oh yeah, sure. Manga is great. <laughs> <laughs> I have been reading some comics too. Uh, some some titles are pretty nice. Which ones are you currently reading? Um. Okay. Uh, I have been reading. Okay. Usually, I went when, whenever I go to like USA, I usually buy some comic back. But I haven't been going at all. <laughs> So I haven't been buying any comic, but the series that I, I like recently is a saga. Oh, saga is amazing. Uh, yeah, saga is really nice. Uh, I like fables. Fables are pretty fun. Yeah. And also I have been reading some like, uh, 
Uh, I think I picked up the uh, Super Suns. Yeah, that was a that's a fun read. Oh uh, yeah, good. it's very nice. Yeah, so far those are the ones that have read recently. Yes. Are you currently up to date with with Saga? I know they're still on a hiatus, but um, have you caught I, up with the with the most recent chapter? That was like two years I ago. <laughs> I don't think I'm not sure. Oh, two man. years ago, maybe I have caught up with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because because Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples, the writer and artist for that oh, yeah. series, they're still on a hiatus. They, originally, they were only on a hiatus for like they set out for eight, like six to eight months, but it's been almost uh -huh. two years now, and, and I can't wait anymore. No way. Um, and with, I won't, I won't spoil it, but the last, the or the recent okay. chapter that they have before they went on hiatus, if you can, oh, if yeah. you do get to it one one day. Yeah, it's gonna break your heart. It, it's no. it's such a it's such a cliffhanger. And that's what they did. They left you at a cliffhanger, no. and on. then took the hiatus. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? Like, I want more. The worst, I want... the worst time to put it on hiatus. <laughs> because like you know, a lot of the the image uh, comic series right. they're they're like manga. You know, it's it's uh -huh. just the one consistent story. Yeah, so it's, it's so, easy to pick up. Yeah, that's what. Yeah. I and, and yeah. that's what it was for Saga for me. Like I, when I first started the podcast, Saga was one that I kept preaching the, the fans to read, like read Saga, <laughs> read it, read it. You know, like no one believed me that it was good. I'm like, it if you like Game of Thrones on, and Star Wars, it's so good. And yeah, it's now that they're on the break, I kind of, I don't want to give up on the series, but I'm just waiting for it now. It's just, yeah, oh my God. I don't I know when it's going to come up. Oh my God. <laughs> I hope they continue soon. Uh, Rasha, I really enjoyed this time having you on the podcast. <laughs> and I, I, I do want to apologize for like the technical issues. Oh, um, no, it was totally fine. Um, but before we leave, if there's any aspiring artists out there that you'd like to say something to, like how would you oh. want to, I guess, inspire them, I guess? Wow, I see. Hmm, okay. I guess the what I want to say to aspiring artists is to... Uh, Okay, there's a lot of things I want to say, but one most important thing that I think you all should hear is that uh, you should never ever give up <laughs> on what you want to do. Um, if this is what you really want to do, like becoming an artist, you know, like something you aspire to be in your life, uh, don't give up on it. I guess it sounds very generalizing, like, you know, it's so very cliche, but then the I gave up on it last time and I, it was the, you know, I know how hard it is to uh, to trying to basically make a name for yourself and everything. And you might doubt yourself a lot sometimes. So I want to say that um, everything is going to be fine in the end and I think you can do it. Um, it might be very scary and painful. And like now, uh, when, when you're just starting, but I just want you to keep going and believe in yourself, even though uh, no one else believed in you <laughs> at first. So yeah, I hope you achieve what you want in the end. So yeah, that's what I want to say. <laughs> Very kind words, Rajda. For fans and listeners, um, is there any way that they can reach out to you too uh, through social media? I uh, see you. Um, I'm on Facebook, uh, Instagram, and Twitter. Just basically search my name on them. Uh, my name is very weird, so you definitely <laughs> will not be redirected to anywhere else. Um, search uh, Rashta Lin, R-A-C-H-T-A-L-I-N. So you definitely find me on either one of these social media. Um, if you need anything, uh, you, you can message me. Uh, I'll try my best to, uh, you know, like, help you out and <laughs> anyway yeah just just look me up and yeah i'll be welcoming you guys to you know to my page and everything hmm. that sounds great um i'll have all the links uh to your social media accounts on in the description for when we upload this episode right. um so yeah thank you so much uh Rashta, for <laughs> for taking time and for uh letting me have you on the podcast there's been great um, like I said, I, I absolutely love your work and keep it up. Uh, hopefully I get to meet you in person one day at a convention. 
Yeah, I hope to meet you too, Ricky. Thank you so much for having me here. It's a uh, has been enjoyable. Uh, it's a nice conversation we had, and thank you so much for having me and being such a great host. All right, so this is episode 63 of Spoiler Force Podcast. Thank mm. you so much again. And for fans and listeners, please check out Rachida's art on uh, social media and make sure to like, share, and subscribe to the Spoiler Force Podcast stuff. And yeah. Uh, yeah, have a great day. All right, have a great day too. If you enjoyed this episode, Make sure to follow, like, share, subscribe, and rate Spoiler Force Podcast. For comments, questions, or criticism, you can email me at rickyvang92 at gmail.com or message me on Instagram at instagram.com slash rickyvang92.